Now that we have discussed about remainder theorem and its various significant facts in the branch of mathematics, let's enter into the next step of the theorems, the factor theorem. Continued from remainder theorem, today's session is about factor theorem. What is a factor theorem? The significance is what we are going to discuss before discussing the theorem itself in its own definition. The importance of factor theorem in the branch of polynomials is that factor theorem helps us in factorizing the polynomials. Remainder theorem helps us in identifying or justifying for the given linear polynomial to be a factor of the other polynomial but factor theorem helps me in finding the factors directly. Finding of the factors or factorizing the given polynomial is what is the main significance of factor theorem. Let's see how it is possible. The theorem says that if I have, say for example, a polynomial p of x, which I need to factorize the question here says factorize the polynomial p of x equals x square plus x minus 12 is how I have this polynomial. So let's see how we can factorize using the factor theorem directly through an example problem. Let's try to understand the concept more stronger. So in this case my given polynomial is p of x equals x squared plus x minus 12. It is a polynomial which is non-zero and I would like to factorize this or express as the product of the linear polynomials. So let's see how we can factorize this given polynomial. Now this quadratic polynomial has its coefficients which are 1 and the coefficient which is 1 and here the coefficient which is negative 12. So I initially pick all the coefficients or the constants from the given polynomial. So once I pick I extract and identify for that for this given polynomial the coefficients are 1, 1 and minus 12. So with this concept I take the middle one. The middle term is always the coefficient of x. Now here the first condition in identifying the polynomial, the quadratic polynomial or any other polynomial in factor theorem is that I make the coefficient of x, x square always 1 or the highest degree coefficient should always be made equal to 1. Now if this is directly out here with the coefficient as 1 so we need not just make the coefficient 1. Or for example, in case I have 2x squared plus 6x minus 9, then I try to make the coefficient of x squared 1 by taking 2 common and I get this to be x squared plus 6 by 2x minus 9 by 2. This is how we take the 2 out and then make the coefficient of x squared or the coefficient of the highest degree polynomial equal to 1. This is how I understand the factor theorem condition. So once we satisfy the condition of the coefficient of x square or the coefficient of the highest degree term being made equal to 1, I try to extract the coefficients. Then the middle coefficient which is 1 and the last two coefficients which are minus 12 times 1 is minus 12 is what helps me in factorization. So once I multiply the first and the last factors, I get the value as negative 12. Now the possible factors of minus 12 are minus 1, minus 3, plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus, and plus or minus 4. And this is minus out here. So I get the possible factors to be plus or minus 1 because 12 by 1 is 1 is a factor of 12, 2 is a factor of 12 
with plus and minus both and 3 is a factor, 4 is a factor, 6 is a factor and equally 12 is also a factor. So I have possibly here 6 different factors for minus 12 is how I identify the factors. So once I identify the possible factors then randomly I try to substitute each of them into the polynomial until the value becomes 0. So out of these I identify the zeros. So which of the polynomials are the zeros is what we are going to identify here. So let's check if this is the zero of the polynomial. P of 1, 1 square plus 1 minus 12 is minus 10 which is not equal to 0. Therefore 1 is not the zero of the polynomial. Even minus 1 also doesn't. So we randomly try with 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, 3 minus 3, 4 minus 4, 6 minus 6 and 12 minus 12 and then whichever is the zero of the polynomial that value is picked and that helps us in factorizing through the factor theorem. Let's try with 2 or minus 2. I get minus 2 whole square plus minus 2 minus 12. 4 minus 2, 2 minus this, again not equal to 0, is what I get here. So here it's again not a 0 of the polynomial P of x given. Let's try with 4 and 3. P of 3 is 3 squared plus 3 minus 12. 3, 3 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12, 12 minus 2, 12 is 0. And yes, P of 3 gives me the 0 of the polynomial. Therefore, x equal to 3 is the 0 of the given polynomial P of x. So I pick this. Next, let me try with 4. Minus 4. So when I pick for minus 4, I get this to be minus 4 whole square plus minus 4 minus 12. 16 minus 4 minus 12 is 0 and therefore even minus 4 is picked. So and so forth. Randomly we go with each of the value of 6 minus 6, 12 minus 12 and then pick the zeros. And here for the polynomial the zeros being p of 3 and p of minus 4. Even 6 and minus 12 does not give 6 plus or minus 6 and plus or minus 12 does not give the zeros of the polynomials. Therefore, 3 minus 4 are the zeros of the polynomial P of x. Now, these being zeros, therefore, x minus a is what we have seen in the remainder theorem. If the remainder is 0, then x minus a is a factor of the given polynomial f of x or P of x. So, x minus 3 and x minus of minus 4, that is x plus 4, are the factors of p of x. Therefore, my p of x, which is x squared plus x minus 12, can be written as the product of the factors x minus 3 into x plus 4, is how I understand factorization through the factor theorem. Factor theorem is based on zeros of the polynomial. So for the given polynomial P of x, I just make the rule 1, that is coefficient of x squared should always be 1. Coefficient of the highest degree term must be 1. And the rest of the terms can be non-1. Pick the coefficients, multiply the first and last, find the possible factors. For each of the possible factors, identify which are the zeros of the polynomials. Pick those zeros of the polynomials and use the remainder theorem. Then we get the linear factors to be x minus a, x minus 3 and x minus of minus 4, x plus 4 to be the factors of the given polynomial p of x. And therefore, that polynomial p of x can be written as product of those two identified factors through the factor theorem. Factor theorem helps us in factorizing the given polynomial. Factorization through factor theorem. 
Now let's see a factor theorem applied example problem using the same concept for a polynomial with a higher degree. In the previous session we have discussed about a polynomial which is a quadratic or with degree 2. Let's try the similar concept through a polynomial of degree 3, a cubic polynomial. So using the factor theorem for say a question where I need to factorize the polynomial x cube minus 6x square plus 11x minus 6. So let's see how I can factorize this cubic polynomial using the factor theorem. So let me go with rule number 1 where I'll write the polynomial p of x as x cube minus 6x square plus 11x minus 6. My first rule is to identify that the coefficient of the highest degree term is 1. So as I identify here the highest degree of this polynomial is 3 and its coefficient is obviously 1. So I need not make it 1. It's already available with coefficient equal to 1 is the rule number 1 in the factor theorem. So now that the rule 1 is satisfied, I pick all the coefficients 1, minus 6, 11 and minus 6. So I pick all the coefficients of this given polynomial and then I take the first and the last. My first and last coefficients are multiplied so that 1 times of minus 6 is equal to minus 6. So I get my product of the first and last term is what I do in the rule 2 of the factor theorem. So rule 2 multiply the first coefficient with the last coefficient and I get the value as minus 6. Now for this minus 6 I find all the possible factors for minus 6. As we know that plus and minus 1 is one of the factor for minus 6 and then plus or minus 2 is the possible factor for this plus or minus 3 is also the possible factor for minus 6 and plus or minus 6 is the possible factor for minus 6. So I have totally the four sets of possible factors plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 6. Now once the rule 2 is satisfied now comes the next rule about finding the zeros of the polynomial. Using these possible factors, I next find the zeros of the polynomials to find zeros. In order to find zeros, I just substitute the values in the polynomial so that when I take 1, when substituted in the polynomial, let's see what would be the possible factor. So when 1 is substituted out here, I get this to be 1 cube minus 6 1 square 11 times 1 minus 6, which on further simplification gives 1 minus 6 plus 11 minus 6, which gives me 12 minus 12, which is 0. Therefore, 1 is the 0 of the polynomial because it gives the value 0 when substituted in the polynomial. So one of the polynomial identified here with 0 is x equal to 1. Next, let's see how we can proceed further with this. Now let's try with the second possible pairs of factors plus or minus 2. So I pick one of the sign that is plus 2 and see if that is the 0 of the given polynomial p of x. So I get this to be p of 2 which is 2 cube minus 6 times plus 11 times minus 6, which on further simplification gives 2 cube, which is 8, 8 minus 6 times 4, which is 24, and plus 22, which is 24 minus 24, because this gives me minus 30 and 24 plus 8, and therefore I get this to be 22, 11 times 2 overall, which gives me 0 on complete simplification. 
Therefore, I clearly identify that even x equal to 2 is the linear factor or x equal to 2 is the zero of the given polynomial p of x. Similarly, I try with the other pair. p of 3, when I check for the zero of the polynomial 3, I just substitute p of 3 and I get this to be 3 cube minus 6 times 3, 11 times 3 minus 6. And this on further simplification gives 3 cube which is 27 minus 6 threes which is 18 11 threes 33 minus 6 which on further simplification gives 27 plus 33 which is 57 60 into the square so 6 times 9 which is 54 so I get this to be 27 minus 54 plus 33 minus 6 which is 54 plus 6, 60, 37 plus 27, 60. So 60 minus 60 also equally gives me 0. And therefore, even 3 is the 0 of the polynomial P of x. Similarly, we try to test randomly through even 6. And then finally, because the degree of the polynomial is 3, I search for 3, 0 polynomials. So now that I got these three polynomial zeros, I just directly have the remainder theorem which says if f of x is 0 or p of a is 0, then directly we have x minus a is the factor of the given polynomial p of x. 1, 2, 3, 1, are now the zeros of p of x. Now 1, 2, 3 are zeros of the p of x. Therefore, x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3 are the factors of p of x. These three are the factors for p of x by using remainder theorem. Therefore, p of x, which is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6 can be written as x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 is how I get the possible factors. Fact, finding the factors or factorization using factor theorem is possible for any polynomial of degree n. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.